Our next speakers are Dr. Charles Browning and Joy Brunson and Subuga. Dr. Browning provides the medical and clinical expertise for opioid use disorder tre treatment, which influences policy and procedure for RI's MAT services. He is the chief medical officer of RI International. Joy is an expert in medication assisted treatment and the chair of the RI opioid consult team. She is the vice president of RI International's Southeast region. Joy has determined that her purpose is to assist with breaking generational and systemic patterns with compassion, creativity, and consistency. Here to discuss where are we now, here are Dr. Charles Browning and Joy Brunson and Subuga. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it has been such a great day, a great summit. We have learned so much. I have learned so much. Um, it, it is amazing to come to an event and have so many notes and, and takeaways um, and just so much unexpected information. So I am thrilled um, about the, the, the day that, that, that we have had. Um, what we would like to talk about, uh, Dr. Chuck and myself, is how, do, how from all of this information do we get to RI? Um, a lot of us on this call work for RI. Um, and how do we use our platform for, for change and to influence um, what is happening in our facilities, what is happening uh, across the board for um, you know, outpatient and residential, and how do we continue to push ourselves forward to remain relevant and evidence-based and to ensure that we are um, utilizing our platform to be that no wrong door for everyone. Um, so we're gonna go to our uh, next slide and Chuck is going to, talk about the RI, the RI way. Um, but before we, we get into that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about whole person. And so it is important for us as a company to not only look at um, when someone is in crisis, to not only look at mental health, but really what we've been hearing all day is, is that whole person care. How do we ensure that we are encompassing everything, that, that we're seeing individuals in a human fashion, and we are uh, addressing all of their needs. Um, even if, it, if that means that it is not with us, but we are ensuring that we are connecting uh, individuals to their community resources. A lot of our services are very short term, um, and we are that access point for the community. We are known in the community as being a safe place, whether that's our community-based programs, whether that's our crisis programs, our outpatient residential programs, the host of programs that, that we have, we're known for being that safe place, that peer-powered um, kind of foundation. So utilizing our um, platform to ensure that we are looking at the whole person, and that includes looking at um, addiction. And addiction includes making sure that we're focused on evidence-based practices, um, which includes harm reduction models, um, which, which includes medication-assisted treatment as well. Chuck, I don't know if you want to um, add, add to this part of our presentation. Well, this part really, really fits into one of our peer power practices, which is uh, whole health wellness and whole person wellness, which includes all this whole, all these holistic approaches. That's the one thing I love uh, about all of today's presentations that really flows within those four keys or rungs of the ladder that we coach uh, to all of our staff about the RI way. Um, and so, you know, the things that the RI opioid consultant team and where we are now have done have really fit into some of those categories. But I think in terms of looking at where we need to go, uh, we can use that same template to look at that. And uh, Dr. Waller challenged us with some really good things to take a look at our systems and how well are our systems doing with approaching the four C's um, and where do we fit with those things. So my brain is already uh, rolling on a lot of ways to look at that. Um, and, uh, you know, so when you, when you go to the, 
the four, the four keys, safety is first. And so one of the things that our Ogui Council has done is really helped in this past year be able to establish that we have Narcan at all of our sites as things that we pass out to folks who are having um, either family members or themselves with use of opioids, it's life-saving harm reduction treatment that helps it reduce, uh, uh, stop an overdose or reverse an open overdose. We've also included it as part of our rescue kits at all of our sites, and it is present at all of our sites. And we've had numerous examples in this past year where uh, people came to our site in the parking lot or things like that found with overdoses, uh, had them reversed and were able to get connected to emergency services before they came back to us for care. Um, and then in terms of engaged, you know, that is what we do at our eyes, a focus on how can we be engaged with others. But I think we're challenged today to look even more at the way we do that, including the way we need to protect ourselves and, uh, and, and, and take care of ourselves in self-care ways so that we can be there for everyone engaged, as well as from a, a, a diversity uh, and trauma-informed care type perspective, being able to understand that we need to be ready and keep expanding the way we look at our internal biases and the way we approach and support all people that come in, um, no matter what um, is going on within ourselves. And so that's a part of engagement is knowing what's going on with yourself so that you can then be able to connect. And the third key being peer power. And we've talked so much today about being strengths focused, being, uh, you know, using trauma-informed care principles, um, being collaborative and working with and not in parallel. And so it flows exactly into what we're doing, but also the power of using uh, peer support uh, as a position, but as a also a voice in the co-design of all the things that we do in our system to make sure it's where it should be. Um, and finally, performance, which is having efficiencies in our system, workflows, uh, things that we're continually designed. Uh, does our ER EHR and avatar help us as a tool uh, in doing those things? Do we have the right workflows and standardizations for the right kinds of medications and things? And that's a big mission statement of our consult team to help give that support and tools to our whole company. Absolutely. And and just on, on the, the screen for our RI opioid consult team, taking those, those um, that RI way and best practices and generating into what, what would we like to put out into our system? What, what would we like to do to change our system um, so that we are supporting individuals that have um, substance use disorders, opioid use disorder. And, and, and this, is, um, this is our mission statement as, as our small group um, that we have decided that we are going to focus on um, to, to ensure that we're not only working on programming, but we're also um, eliminating stigma. We're also uh, increasing access. Um, because we know that, as Dr. Waller says, as the panel said, there are disparities in, in, in the system. And it can be easy for us to say, yes, we started these services and then not go back and check on them later. Um, but, but to be able to look at data, to be able to look at how are we impacting our community and are we actually serving our community or are we only um, serving a select population? And, and so all of these things have been in, included in our RI opioid consult team um, approach to how we are uh, addressing these concerns. And if we can go to the next slide, this is a, a graphic that we started way back when, uh, Dr. Chuck, um, maybe three years ago, we started with this, this is what we wanted to do. Um, and this was our goal and our goal was big and we weren't quite sure how we were gonna reach that goal, but, but we knew there was uh, problems. Um, in our communities, we, we knew that we weren't able to support the, in all of the individuals that were coming to us. And, and, and we knew that the problem was big and this is what we wanted to um, address. Uh, access being a big barrier to care. Um, clinical fit to need, um, Dr. Waller touched on this one too. Um, being able to have different levels of care in, in the system so that we're not just offering that one option when, when individuals come to us. And also having good assessment tools so that we're just not seeing everyone as fit for our program, but we have those community connections 
Um, so, so that we're also able to refer to a next level of, of care, have that warm handoff um, when someone warrants a different level of care than, than, than we can provide. And, and then of course we are our I, and so we are peer powered, we are recovery focused, and we wanted to ensure that we are true to our, our mission as a company and that we were bringing peer support as the foundation for what we are doing. And, and, and so for us doing uh, medication assisted treatment is not doing it the same way that maybe other companies are, are, are doing it, but how can we do it the RI way? Chuck, over to you. Well, I think if you go to the next slide, uh, you know, these are some of the things that projects that we're working on uh, that, that line up with some of these goals and some of the things that we're trying to do. Uh, so definitely one of the things we're aiming for um, is to make sure that every site has the infrastructure and tools uh, in it to be able to do inductions uh, for buprenorphine when people present with opiate use disorder, um, as well as being able to know how to continue methadone and buprenorphine safely for people who come in with other crises. Um, a lot of places, hospitals, psychiatric hospitals and psychiatric crisis centers can't manage and support people who are already established on MAT that come in with suicidality or psychosis or mania because they don't have the tools to do that. And we need to have all of our sites be able to do that. Um, and then at a, at a bigger national level, I mean, we are at the leading front of innovation and thought leadership on the development of crisis care systems throughout our country. And so we have an ability to include and make sure that the system as it develops has uh, built-in access and support and is designed to help folks in crisis with substance use and opiate use disorder of all walks of life um, so that we help uh, support building that in. Uh, what are some other projects that we're doing? Well, as, as, as you can see on, um, on the screen, our project status, um, one of the things that we really wanted to do last year was have a summit, and we weren't able to do that last year, but we can check that off our list this year that we were able to do um, a, a, a summit. Um, you will see in green all of the projects that we have completed, meaning in Delaware and in North Carolina, um, all of the projects that we have where the sites have started doing uh, MAT in their programs. And, and, and then the ones in progress are all of the states and the sites that we are currently working with. Um, and it is, it is very challenging work. Every time the, the team goes into a different state, we encounter a different challenge um, for a, a facility to be able to provide in MAT. Some places it's pharmacy, some places licensure. Um, it's, it is really just being able to overcome those barriers. And I, I think RI as a company, we do this all the time. We look at challenges and we work to overcome them because at the end of the day, we believe in our services. We believe in doing what's best for our guests and we will continue to break down those barriers for them. And, and so in yellow, you will see all of the sites that we are currently working with. And then in red are the ones that are the, the, the next ones on deck. And as Dr. Browning said, service implementation is one piece for us, for our programs to be able to provide these services. But our platform is international. And so we are utilizing that platform to eliminate stigma and to bring awareness. So on the bottom of the slide are all the ways that we are working to eliminate stigma, to bring awareness, to use our platform to ensure that um, we are showcasing the evidence-based practices. Um, we are working to make sure that the knowledge out there is evidence-based. And we are um, ensuring that we put that into the, the, the work that, that we're doing through presentations and talks. And, um, you know, I just added into most conversations that I have just because um, it's, it's a, a, a way to make sure that, that we're getting our information out there. And then a typical uh, consult timeline when we're going and meeting with um, the leaders in the, in the states 
and over certain programs. Um, there is a timeline that, that we go through for support and encouragement um, from the provider level to the nurse level, to the peer level, to the leadership level, um, clinician level, just impacting all of those levels um, to ensure that we have what we need to get services started and individuals are very comfortable um, providing services. And we also do the training ourselves. So no site has to like reinvent the wheel per se, but we are there to ensure that we are helping to train staff. We are helping to train leaders. Um, and some of our providers, Dr. Shana and Dr. Vincent, are uh, on call when that first um, person comes in um, to provide that MAT to them. They're on call to assist with walking uh, that provider, that nurse through that process. And, and, and so a lot of it is about that teamwork and getting in there and, and making sure that we're providing the, the support. And, and finally, I, I will say the plan is to ensure that all of our sites have this capability by the end of 2021. Um, that is a lofty goal. We are diligently working towards it. Um, I believe that we will make it, um, but that, that is our overall goal, that we are up and prepared and trained and have medication in our facilities and being able to provide this service at all of our sites by the end of 2021. Joy, with that in mind, um, one of the things that I've, I've loved about this summit is how, uh, as many people have voiced, how um, inspiring and motivating it is to hear uh, this new information, as well as uh, the way that you hear sometimes the same information repeated by different people with different a voice that hits you in a different way and, that I, and it's inspiring even more so. And so I hope all of you that have been on this call can take that with you. Um, and continue to help support being champions in your own individual areas and your own individual sites because you need one thing we figured out when we do these implementations and we work to reduce stigma within our own sites is you need champions who have information and knowledge who help share that and advocate uh, for for that support and so it's, it's important for everything we do for everyone that we serve at RI but with a lot of the myths and stigma that goes with substance use disorders it's especially important uh, for you so I hope all of you can take that spirit with you uh, to your area when you go as we move forward, because in order to move this to all sites of 2021, it, it, it will take uh, champions at each area too. So thank, thank you for much for our quick update of where RI is in providing uh, MAT services at our location. Um, I will also say uh, if you have any ideas, suggestions, um, areas of improvement, any of that, please uh, email the RII opioid co consult team. Our uh, email is in the two section of, the, uh, of, of our email. Um, just make sure you reach out to us so that we can um, continue our projects, continue to support you as, as, as you support um, our, our guests. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy and Dr. Browning.